it's really about exploring or, or setting bounds, understanding the bounding conditions that we have. There's technologies that are in the Zooks that we actually are working on today and we have in prototypes that we've shared, though it doesn't look anything like this. As part of every uh, LEGO design process, whenever we're creating new products, whatever they are, um, we always, of course, involve the, the kids in that process. We get a lot of input, things that work, things that don't work, things they understand, they don't understand. And then we make sure we, uh, we turn up uh, those things that they, they really want to see in the models. And then during the, the creation of the models, where we're really going into the details about how the models are made, then we're continuously putting the models back in front of the kids to, to get them to play with them, to get them to make sure that things don't fall off when they drive them around. I think every generation has something that is a challenge to accept. I mean, for my generation, it was mobile phones. The first mobile phones had uh, fake aerials so that you believed they could actually communicate. Um, and now you give a kid a piece of glass uh, and it's a, it's a mobile phone. Of course, it connects. And I think that's going to be the same with this kind of technology as well. These machines work in a site where Yes, there's no operator with the machine, but there's still people in a site that are managing multiple machines or different work uh, steps within a site. And so again, to have that personality or that bit that connects with the individuals that are still working in the site is extremely important. In, in a lot of cases with autonomy, we want to get people out of dangerous environments first and foremost. It provides that opportunity to take the person out of dangerous spaces and allows them to work in a safe environment. They understand that this machine is something different because there is no driver's cab. There is a camera, there is this little mapping drone. And they tell us lots of stories about how it could go in dangerous environments, how it could go places where we can't go to, but it'd be great because then it could do this or this. You know, all sorts of stories. And, uh, and it was really uh, interesting to draw from their knowledge about what they expected to see in these types of vehicles. So you have the, you know, the really knowledgeable guys and engineers from, uh, from Volvo that have this uh, you know, incredible knowledge about how a machine should work today and how it could work in the future. And then you have the, the LEGO Technic designers that have a, a huge knowledge of how machines work because they're making different versions of them. But again, maybe they're not as restricted as the, uh, as the real designers because no one's ever told them you can't do it. So it gives a, an amazing opportunity to, uh, uh, to get those two teams together. You get the knowledge and you get this kind of naivety and when you put it together and, and, and this is kind of like the result of that. The main purpose that we have with the wheel loader is to move material from point A to point B. And so right now an operator is you know, physically in the machine and, and doing that. Now an operator could be running multiple machines to do multiple steps of moving material. So still working as a partner but not actually in the machine to, to, to channel the work effort. The vehicle knows where it is. The biggest question is, you don't necessarily know that it knows. Um, you can have that sense that, okay, it's fine, I, I believe it's no problem, but you miss that interaction that you get just from simply crossing the road and you see a car waiting at a junction, you, you instinctively make eye contact with the driver, you know that they've seen you, you know it's safe to, to walk across in front of them. It's the same kind of thing with this, but how do you get that interaction? So by having this, uh, this movable camera, which kind of started as, a, as just a, a camera and we said well the machine doesn't need it it's got sensors and then we kind of realized that well no the machine doesn't need it but maybe we need it and so by having this camera which can you know sort of just just turn to look at you as you walk past or as it drives past you it gives you that confidence to know that the machine has seen you and, and that's really the kind of the human element for this is uh, is is really important to us and it it really became, I think, one of the most uh, proudest features of the, of the vehicle for us.